okay. Oh, see, it doesn't spin that much. Get it. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so on it's the hard to talk when you're doing that. It is really. We're like trying to I communicate. Try to ah. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Wow, that a little launches. bit of spin. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I certainly am. I'm in Southern Florida with Brooks from Drag Times. Hey guys, how you doing? And his garage has radically changed since the last time I've been here. Yeah, we've swapped so a lot of cars. You've swapped a lot of stuff out. One of the newest, latest and greatest in Brooks's garage. This gorgeous Napier Green 765 LT. I love this car. What do you think of it? It's just amazing so far. If you haven't seen the videos, this thing's Quickest car down the quarter mile production wise stock. Yeah, ever. ever. Yeah. That is three. actually ridiculous. 9.3 at 151. What's your favorite part about the car? You know, compared to the 720, which we actually have right here, it's just the more raw experience. The car shakes, it rumbles, it's a lot faster, the gearing's shorter. Um, obviously, it's quite a bit lighter as well. And uh, it's just a lot more lively and fun to drive. Obviously you have the 600, so you know what that's about. Yep. So we'll briefly go over some of the specs of the car and then we'll take it out for a quick drive with Brooks um, and talk about ownership experience and what this thing is actually like. This thing is 176 pounds lighter than the McLaren 720S, which already was class leading for lightness. It's more hardcore, it's got stiffer suspension, it also also got more power, 45 more horsepower for a total of 755 horsepower and 590 pound feet of torque out of its four liter twin turbocharged V8, which is thanks to new fuel pump, aluminum forged pistons, a new titanium exhaust that's actually 40% lighter than the 720S's exhaust, even though it has twice the amount of tips and new tuning. One of the craziest differences, it's got shorter gearing than the 720S to improve acceleration. The last thing I ever thought was that the 720S needed improved acceleration, but they, they've done it. Is it a radical difference? It's a big difference. You'll <laughs> notice when we go for a drive. And dyno-wise, yeah. the car actually put down 765 horsepower. At the wheels? The wheels. That is nuts. So, and I'm also not surprised. Yeah. This is so funny. So they claim it's 755 horsepower, then it did 765 at the wheels. They claim zero to 60 in 2.8 seconds, but you did like 2.1? 2.1 at the track. At the track. It's insane. And then you ran a 9.3 on Pirelli P0 tires yeah. when the car should come on Trofeo R's, which would be even better. It could be, yeah, <laughs> for sure. absolutely ridiculous. One of my favorite parts of the car is this rear end. We've got the massive rear aero brake. That spoiler is gorgeous. I love these hexagonal cuts to allow venting out of the engine, hot air extraction, and this kind of floating rear diffuser. I love the side vents as well. So this car actually has the brakes, the calipers off of the McLaren Senna. And one option that's gotta be the craziest McLaren option ever is for $18,000, you can get Senna rotors and pads. So rotors and pads, for $18,000. Apparently they take like seven months to make in this special process where they spent months at over a thousand degrees. Uh, I certainly probably wouldn't spend the money on that. You didn't get that option. <laughs> I got two options on this car, the paint and stitching, that's it. The paint looks gorgeous. Napier green is an absolutely awesome color scheme. More downforce than the 720S. We've got a much more aggressive front splitter. We've got the signature LT vents on the front fenders. And then of course, big wing and intense rear diffuser. On the inside, looks traditional McLaren, very similar to the 720S, but tons of Alcantara exposed carbon fiber. You can get the optional Senna seats. These are the P1 style sport seats. How have the seats been in terms of comfort? They're actually not bad at all. You know, I have the sport seats in this car. These are the P1s. I declined from the Senna seats because they are pretty hard to get in and out of but I've been driving this, I got over a thousand miles and, and I'm all good, it's really, it's pretty comfortable. Awesome, all right, I think the only thing left to do is take a first spin. Let's go. Let's do it. All right. <laughs> you got traction all the way on right now. Yeah, yeah. that was still ridiculous. Yeah, you can feel it actually kind of pulling you back a little bit, right? Wow, yeah. yeah. I was extremely excited when they revealed this car. The 720S is an amazing machine. In my opinion, it was a little bit too comfortable. And what was so cool about it is that you could be used as two different vehicles, almost a like 
daily driver of sorts in the supercar world. It's got one of the most supple and compliant suspensions out there, yet at the same time it's crazy fast in a straight line. But I personally prefer more raw and exciting vehicles, hence the 600 LT that I have. But when they made a LT version of the 720S, it's literally 90% of a Senna for you paid 380 for this yeah, instead of a million dollars. Yeah. I mean, it's got potentially just as much horsepower as a Senna since it's underrated. Yeah, Maybe write, more. I mean, they write the Senna at 800 horsepower. And I, I haven't seen a Senna on the dyno, but I imagine this probably makes maybe a little more, honestly. Yeah. We'll have to see. Yeah. And pretty, I guess you crazy. coming from the 600, you understand the differences in handling and, and uh, suspension. But I've been driven the 720 for four years now, right? Yeah. So when I jump in this, I'm like, wow, what a difference. You know, and it really makes a difference when you get the LT versions of these cars. Yeah, so this has a quicker steering rack, firmer suspension. It's lowered a little bit over the 720S. And instantly you can feel the ride isn't as comfortable, but that's a positive thing. I think you so can too. feel the road more, and it's just, it seems exciting when you're not even going quickly. Yeah, I mean, even if you look in your mirror over there, you can see that the mirror shakes at engine idle. Yep. You know what I mean? You can feel the vibration of the engine in the in the, in the, in the, in the, in the uh, P1 seats right here. McLaren is the king of lightweight cars. I mean, every time they release a new model, it's lighter than Ferrari's version or Lamborghini's version. But they've gone so lightweight that this car comes standard with no air conditioning and no radio. So it's a no-cost option to add back in the radio and the air conditioning, which I think weighs like 25 pounds total. I can't imagine ordering a car in 2021 without air conditioning. No, but, not uh, with the EC. Some people might skip the stereo. I don't yeah. actually use the stereo a lot in this car anyways, but I always want to have it. And uh, you get different levels of stereo as well, the four speaker, the 12 speaker, if you want to save a little weight. Um, but they do go to extreme options. You can get carbon fiber door panels and rear quarter panels for $37,000 and yeah. save about 14 pounds. <laughs> or you could just go to the gym a couple days a week. Literally. Yeah. I could lose 14 pounds, <laughs> and I, I think I'd rather do that than spend $37,000. $37, yeah, I hear you. But it's pretty crazy. I mean, we've got titanium lug nuts. The wheels are lighter. Everything about this car is about being as light as possible, as much power as possible and incredible on the track and I think the kind of hidden gem that this car had is it was supposed to be the super fun to drive really fast track car and it ended up being the fastest car in the world in the quarter mile for right now yes for, for a production right. stock car yeah until someone tries yeah I mean a uh, car and driver I think in January got a 9.4 and a Chiron that's right that costs nearly three million dollars more than this car right. has almost exactly double the horsepower and double the turbos and double the amount of cylinders so you would hope that uh it would do well but the crazy part is that car has so much more power but it weighs so much it really goes to show what keeping the car as light as possible does for performance of course and of course on the top end i'm sure the chiron yeah 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 would start pulling away i mean this car only goes 202 because they pulled the gearing back. Yeah. So it loses about 12 miles an hour on the top end, and obviously a Chiron goes like 260. Yeah. Which way are you gonna do that at? The amount of times you're going over 200 are exactly. probably slim. Any issues with the car so far? I imagine nothing. No problem so far, the car's been great. That's awesome. So how does it feel compared to the 600? It definitely feels bigger. Yeah. Um, it's hard to evaluate the handling in southern yeah, florida we don't have, <laughs> we don't have the best down, roads though. you notice the gearing change though yeah yeah no for sure okay the car rides completely different the yeah. steering feels much quicker much more responsive wow all right i'm gonna i'm gonna go level one traction off okay i want you to do that again but let those guys get a little farther up actually didn't struggle for traction at all, which yeah. is pretty ridiculous. I mean, a tiniest amount, yep. but for... Now if we go full off... All right, full off. off. <laughs> this thing is long. It's just nuts. Wow. It feels really... Like, I don't get to sit over here a lot of times when people are driving over there. So yeah, it's yeah. It's a different experience. It's really cool. I'm sure it's a lot more intense yeah. than the passenger seat. But man, for a off-the-shelf, anyone-can-buy car, 
This is so ridiculously yeah. fast. You gotta bring this out to California so we can drive in some canyon Should roads or out to yeah. out to the tail of the dragon. Yeah, why don't we meet up at Tail of the Dragon? I'm down. I just bought a place up there so we can yeah. have a have that's, a trip out there. That's super exciting. Sure. are unbelievably good and unlike the 720s apparently if you're full on the gas and then you let go the aero brake actually activates without hitting the brakes yeah that's pretty cool that wing when you're behind the car the presence this thing has on the road uh just rolling i was in a friend's 675 lt while he was driving this it looks so cool the wing the extra wing height over the 720s and aggressiveness is it looks a lot bigger it's on nice. the road than kind of when you're in here though too. Like the It does look a lot bigger. Yeah. This car is awesome. This thing's a lot of fun. Oh, I want to get it in the canyons and feel the handling so yeah. bad. But certainly from a seat of the pants acceleration standpoint, uh, this thing is out of this world. And we got some pops and crackles. Yeah. You can hear in the camera, but it's uh, nice you don't have to do that you don't have to tune or anything yeah for a pops. stock car yeah to get a little bit of pops and cracks not too annoying and over the top yeah and so you then drove a mutual friend of ours downpiped and tuned 765 lt yeah and what did that do in the quarter mile so that added about 200 horsepower and reset wow. the record for any mclaren down the quarter mile running an 87 at 150 almost 159 in the quarter mile that Eight, car's seven. We did zero to sixty in one point seven seconds. <laughs> just phenomenal. The oh short, my god! The gosh. shorter gearing in the seven six five just allows for a much more aggressive zero to sixty setup. You know. Yeah, it's weird going through almost two sets of gear changes by the right. time you hit sixty. Exactly. Yet somehow it gets plenty of traction, even with traction control off and. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I think you gotta try launch control. Alright, that's All right. a good idea. Okay. Oh! See, it doesn't spin that much. Get it wow! Shit. Yeah, so. It's almost, hard to talk when you're doing that. It is really. We're like trying to I communicate. Tried to ah. Yeah, wow. <laughs> wow, but that A little bit of spin, and then it just goes. I don't yeah. know how McLaren does it. Don't they actually probably have the best launch control of any car company. Right, for Porsche was the king for a long time with that Turbo S. Yeah. That kind of still is with their off the launch, especially, you know, if there's debris in the road or it's a little bit damp or something like that. Yeah. That car is crazy because it's all wheel drive. But for a rear wheel drive yeah. car, there is, yeah, the F8 doesn't launch like this. No. So you drove the SF90. That yes. thing launches like crazy. That launches better. I did 0 to 60 on the street, 2.1 seconds. <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a wicked, wicked. It feels like a Tesla, but keeps going. Yeah, the Tesla dies at like 60 yeah. miles an hour. Not anymore in plaid mode, though. We'll see. I'm excited plaid for that. Plaid mode's out soon. Mine got delayed. I should have it in, they say, now two more months. So you got the triple motor one coming? Yeah, I got that one, too. Both. I got plaid and plaid plus. So, oh, so plaid doesn't have three motors? It does, yes. Oh, okay. But plaid plus does something else on top of that. Yeah, that's the like sub two seconds zero to sixty car. Just the plaid does zero to sixty in one nine. Oh wow. Yeah. <laughs> yep, this is uh, out of this world fast. <laughs> I love how you can feel the vibrations too. Like the whole car just feels. That's awesome. what the LT is all about. Yeah. Like obviously the weight savings and the power and the the speed around the track, but actually just from a ownership experience, it makes it more fun it's and exciting. so much more fun than the 720. And you still have your 720. I still have the 720, <laughs> so I drove it the other day to the gym, and I, I, got, I grabbed the steering wheel, and it's a thicker steering wheel, and it, and it feels all loose, Yeah. and the car's like diving all over. I'm like, wow, I drove this thing for four years. I thought it was the best thing, but now there's this. Like, it's just next level. It is next level. And a lot of people ask me, like, hey, would you ever, sell your 600 or would you rather have a 600 LT or a 720S? Yeah. My answer was always the 600 LT even though the 720 was faster. Now this has solved every problem. This this might, yeah. This, this is freaking awesome. Yep. I could see eventually swapping out for one of these. I think you should. Then I won't be left in the dust. You'll your be, cars are getting too yeah, fast, man. man. <laughs> What's crazy is as fast as this car is, can the, the Tesla's supposed to beat it in two months. I can't fathom how that yeah, for something that what weighs over yeah. four thousand pounds. Yeah.
Gary That's supposed to go around. nine two in the quarter mile. Wow. At one fifty five, which is a higher mile an hour than this. I'm excited to see Love that. It. I can't wait. No, I think my SF ninety and the Tesla Platter are coming in around the same time. It's gonna be a busy couple months. That is gonna be wild. Yeah. Well, if you're not subscribed to Brooks's channel, we've got a link in the description below, so make sure to do that. Thanks for letting me drive this car. Anytime, Parker. Always fun hanging out. Yes, it is. Oh, this is. So, you, what's your future car plans? You got the SF90? I sold the F8, so I got the SF90 coming. I got the Tesla Plaid, this 765. Then I got to decide when I sell the 720, what's next? I can't decide. I either want to go old school to my roots with an RX-7 FD. Ooh, that would be cool. Try triple triple rotor, single turbo, or maybe a Turbo S. I know there's right. different worlds. Well, stay That's tuned. Who knows what Brooks is getting. There you go. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Obviously, I'm going to do a more thorough review of the car when I can get it out in the canyons, uh, setting that up as we speak. Look forward to seeing you guys next video.